This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on relative motion of two particles using translating axes. This is from Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler, Chapter 12.10. Today's objectives, students will be able to relate the positions, velocities, and accelerations of particles undergoing relative motion. Activities include some applications, we'll define relative motion, we will develop an approach to solving the problems, and we'll solve some problems. So here are two jets flying in formation. The pilots want to know their relative motion at all time in order to avoid a collision. So far in this course, the absolute motion of a particle has been determined using a single fixed reference frame. Sometimes it may be easier to analyze the motion by using two or more frames of reference. For example, the motion of a particle located at the tip of an airplane propeller while the plane is in flight is more easily described if one observes first the motion of the airplane from a fixed reference and then superimposed vectorially the circular motion of the particle measured from a reference attached to the airplane. It's important to note that axes can translate only. No rotation is allowed. So let's look at this diagram here. We have a fixed observer at O. We have another observer at A that is moving along this path. And that observer has a coordinate system attached to him. And there's another particle, B, moving along this path. How can we describe the motion of particle B with respect to the translating observer A? Well, we have these three vectors here. We have RA, RB, and RV with respect to A. So we can do a vector addition by saying that the uh, RB is equal to RA plus RB with respect to A. So it is a simple matter to take the derivative of this equation with respect to time. So the change in r with respect to time is the velocity. So the velocity of b is equal to the velocity of a plus the velocity of b with respect to a. Likewise, we can take the derivative of this equation with respect to time, and we'll get the acceleration of b is equal to the acceleration of a plus the acceleration of b with respect to a. Now what do we mean by velocity of b with respect to a? So the a means I'm the observer is at a and he's observing the particle B in motion. So the velocity of B with respect to A would be as if I were this person here. What is the velocity of B with respect to me, even though I am moving as well? Now note the order of the subscripts here. The way it's B, A, B, A. That's the way I remember it. I mean, it, this is incorrect. R of B is equal to R of A plus R of A with respect to B. Now, this is wrong. B, A, B, A. So that's how you remember it. Our procedure for analysis, we will first specify the particle A that is the origin for the translating axes. And usually this point has a known velocity or acceleration. Since the vector addition forms a triangle, there can be at most two unknowns. Uh, these unknowns, you can solve for them graphically using the law of sines or cosines, but it's much easier to resolve the three vectors into rectangular or Cartesian components. And that's the way we'll solve these problems. So here's a problem. This train is traveling at a constant speed of 60 miles an hour and crosses over a road. The automobile A is traveling at 45 miles per hour along the road, and the road is at 45 degrees to the railroad track. Determine the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the train relative to the automobile. So we want the velocity of the train with respect to the automobile. So the equation we want is the velocity of the train is equal to the velocity of the automobile plus the velocity of the train with respect to the automobile. So let's solve this problem. Let's write down the equation again. The velocity of the train is equal to the velocity of the automobile plus the velocity of the train with respect to the automobile. So the velocity of the train, our coordinate frame we define here. It's a fixed coordinate frame attached to the ground. So the velocity of the train in that coordinate system is 60i miles per hour. The velocity of the automobile, it's traveling at 45 miles an hour at an angle of 45 degrees, so it's 45 cosine 45 EI plus sine of 45 in the J. So now it's a simple matter of substitution into this equation here. So the velocity of the train is 60I, that's equal to the velocity of the automobile, which is 45 cosine 45i 
plus sine 45 j plus the velocity of the train with respect to the automobile. So you can solve for this and you come up with 28.2i minus 31.8j. It's always important to put the units on your answer. And it's also important to report the answer only to the same number of significant digits that you were initially given. So here's another problem. We have a car at A, which is traveling at 18 meters per second in this direction, and it's accelerating at 2 meters per second squared in the opposite direction. We also have a car at B. Now it's traveling in a circular path of radius 100 meters. It is accelerating at 3 meters per second squared, and its velocity is 12 meters per second. What are the key equations, and where do we place to fix the moving axes? So what we want is the velocity and acceleration of B with respect to A. So that means we should put our moving axes, x prime, y prime, on A, because we're interested in acceleration of B with respect to A. So let's solve this problem. So here's our equation. So the velocity of b is, now here's our fixed frame here. So the velocity of b is minus 12j. The velocity of a is 18 meters per second in the fourth, in the third quadrant. So it's minus 18 cosine 60i minus 18 sine 60j. And you can simplify that. You come up with this. Uh, the magnitude of square root of the sum of the squares. So the answer, the magnitude of the velocity of b with respect to a is 9.69 meters per second. Now let's determine the acceleration vectors. Uh, first, let's do the acceleration of a. Now a is moving in a straight line, and its acceleration vector is 2 meters per second squared in the first quadrant at an angle of 60 degrees. So the acceleration of a is 2 cosine of 60 in the i plus sine of 60 in the j. Now let's look at the acceleration of b. Now car b is moving in a circular path, so we have to calculate the normal and tangential components of the acceleration. So at this instant, the tangential direction and the normal direction are coincident with the xy axis in the same direction, but opposite signs. So this is the tangential direction, this is the normal direction. So the tangential component of the acceleration of B is 3 meters per second squared, and it's in negative J direction, so minus 3J meters per second squared. And this should be meters per second squared also. Now the normal component of the acceleration of B is going to be V squared over rho. So car B is moving 12 meters per second, and rho is 100. So normal component of acceleration of b is 12 squared over 100 and that is in the negative j direction so that is minus 1.44 j meters per second squared so the acceleration of b is the tangential component minus 3j plus the normal component, which is minus 1.44i meters per second squared. So now it's a simple matter of substitution. We want the acceleration of b with respect to a. So the formula we want is acceleration of b is equal to the acceleration of a plus acceleration of b with respect to a. So acceleration of b is minus 3j minus 1.44i that equals the acceleration of A, which is 2 times cosine of 60 in the I, plus sine 60 in the J, plus acceleration of B with respect to A. So we can solve this, and we get the acceleration of B with respect to A is minus 2.44I minus 4.73J meters per second squared. This concludes this chapter. Next is chapter 13, Kinetics of a Particle, Force and Acceleration.